Welcome to the Business Miracles Podcast. I'm Heather Dominic, founder of businessmiracles.com. Since 2010, I've been training highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe to work less while making more impact and income by doing things differently. I'm so glad you've joined me. Listen in and get ready for a shift in the way you view yourself, your work, your life. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 109, Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership with Pleasure Strategist Lydia Bonilla. Welcome to this special series of the Business Miracles podcast, Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership, where you'll be hearing real stories from real highly sensitives creating real success. In today's episode, I am just thrilled to spend some time talking to Business Miracles community member, Lydia Bonilla. I invite you to listen in as I talk with Lydia to hear how before she joined the Business Miracles community and highly sensitive leadership training programs, she was resistant to admitting that she was highly sensitive and thought being highly sensitive would mean she was weak and whiny. But after joining the program, she learned that being highly sensitive is a natural part of who she is, and she could actually use this strength to move to the Dominican Republic to help her father and navigate difficult conversations with her family around his care. A friendly possible trigger warning for you, Lydia vulnerably and powerfully shares about caring for her aging father, including aspects about his hospitalization during our conversation. From there, in addition to being a valued member of the Business Miracles community and highly sensitive leadership training programs, Lydia is a pleasure strategist and product inventor committed to women having lives full of power, pleasure, and intimacy. Her signature program, The Pleasure Reset, is a transformational three-month course into radical self-acceptance and self-mastery around desire and pleasure. She is the founder of House of Plume, an intimate lifestyle brand that provides the discerning consumer with storage options for their pleasure items. She is the co-founder and advisor of the Women of Sex Tech, a non-for-profit organization dedicated to merging sex and technology. Her work has been covered by the New York Times, Refinery29, Forbes, and Essence Magazine. She is one amazing, highly sensitive leader. And I'm honored to invite you to listen in to this very vulnerable and powerful conversation. Lydia, welcome to the Business Miracles podcast. And specifically, thank you for being willing to share your story as part of Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I am too. Beautiful. So to start us off, I'd love for you to just share a little bit about, you know, how you and I first connected. And as part of that, what it was like for you to discover that you are highly sensitive. Let's start there. Sure. So that's a funny story. So my friend Regine told me once on the train, I think it was probably the A train, that she was like, you know, Lydia, I think you may be highly sensitive. You, you want maybe want to check out this program. And I just heard the word highly sensitive. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Like I just, I, you know, my experience of that or my knowledge, my limited knowledge of that was that of someone who's weak and whining and, you know, just like, I was like, no, that's, that's not me. And so probably like two years later, I called her in, in a breakdown about, life in general, my finances, my business and da, 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 and my career. I just says, you know, you maybe really ought to want to check that, you know, what I told you before out. And I was like, I don't remember anything about it. And um, so I, I did, I, I reached out to your team, had a great conversation with someone. And then I was like, mm, I don't know, because I'm going to be traveling. I'm, you know, I'm taking the leap into full-time entrepreneurship. And I don't know if I have the funds to, to invest in this. And part of what I was told was that to look for a sign that, you know, this is something that, you know, that is meant for me to do. So I went on a 
10-day silent meditation retreat in Oaxaca, Mexico. And one of the meditation teachers there that was teaching another cohort looked exactly like you. And I went, it's down to the haircut. And I was like, oh my God. So I had to, you know, stare at this woman for like 10 days in <laughs> silence. And I was like, okay. So I, as soon as I got back, you know, I, I signed up and it's, it's been great from there. I love this. I love this story for so many reasons. So first of all, I love that you're on the A train because so that's for anyone who doesn't know one of the subways in New York City. And it's the train that I would ride when my husband and I first started dating because he was living in Washington Heights and I was living in Greenwich Village. Mm -hmm. Um, So I spent a lot of time on that Mm -hmm. train. And I also love that story because you were talking to Regine and Regine is a member of the Business Miracles community and the highly sensitive leadership training programs. But Regine also is a former high school student of mine. And I personally silently refer to her as like my little soul sister. So I love that our connection started there. And then I just find the way that the universe can work totally humorous that you were forced to look at a woman who looks almost like me in silence for 10 days. And that was the sign that you received. And Mm -hmm. then it took you, it was a two year process, right? Yeah, it was a two year process. Yeah. Right. I really appreciate that too, because definitely for myself and I know for so many others, like when I first learned that I was highly sensitive, I was like absolutely resistant. But as I really embraced it, it's, you know, very obviously made such a difference for me. And I've seen the difference that it makes for so many others and yourself included. So mm-hmm. I'd love for if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, maybe how, how, how life has changed for you as you have embraced the fact that you're highly sensitive. Maybe if there's one area that you can think of where in the past it, you know, felt extremely challenging and now maybe not so much because you understand how to go about it differently. Anything come to mind for you along those lines? I mean, many things. I I really, my life is told like the perception of myself, how I feel in my mind and body is totally different. You know, I didn't realize how much I was at war with myself until I became, you know, more knowledgeable about what it is to be highly sensitive with strengths and as well as, you know, the, the shadows of it. But I mean, one thing in particular, I would say is the, you know, is dealing with change. So in January of 2021, that's where we are right now, 2021, I moved from New York to the Dominican Republic because, you know, I had been feeling for a while and it was something I was ignoring, but like a call to go and, you know, just to make sure my dad is OK. My, my, that's what was my intention. My intention was to like, oh, go with him to a few doctor's appointments and I'll go to the beach and do my thing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this will be great. And that was that for about two weeks. And what happened after that was he's been hospitalized a number of times. He's been hospitalized now three times. And so it's been once every month, once a month now he's been hospitalized and he has been diagnosed with pretty serious illness. And it has been such a gift to be able to, you know, use the tools to manage my energy throughout it, manage my emotions of like, you know, sadness, anger, just unadulterated rage sometimes, having communications, different conversations with family. My father is is one of 12. So it's a lot of conversations to have with people and different, and people have different opinions about what he should be doing and different opinions about what I should be doing. And it's been just great to be just in what's happening and not like not be taken by it. So for example, one of the things that I was I found myself angry about was the things that I had to cancel and shift. And, you know, I'm not the only one on the planet, particularly in these exceptional times has had to, you know, shift things around, but 
I was like, I don't want to cancel another thing. And so even today, he ten, last night he was admitted. I took him, you know, to the emergency room. And I was at a point where I was like, I was going to cancel this interview. And I said, you know, there's never going to be a, there's never given what's happening. It's not going to be a better time. Just, you know, do the best you can work it out. And I did, you know, I did what I needed to do in the hospital. My aunt stayed with my father. I came here, you know, came home to, to be able to, to have this interview in, in a quiet place. And, you know, I haven't fallen apart. I'm happy. And, you know, my father is well taken care of. And I got like a huge, a pretty, a pretty big product order like this morning too. So it's interesting. And in, 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 in all of this quote unquote chaos, there's also like abundance and, and things to, to actually celebrate. Yeah, this is amazing. I really, really appreciate you sharing about, you know, what's happening for you right now and, and definitely in connection to being with your father, again, you made this huge move, you know, from New York to the Dominican Republic, and then so much has happened and, and happened so fast since you've been there. So one, I'm just grateful that you're, you know, willing to, to share that this is what you are personally facing right now, because this is life, right? And like you said, this is life, especially in these exceptional times. So we, we must learn how to be able to manage everything that comes our way in terms of, you know, wave after wave of uncertainty right now, rather than resist against it and, and be so upset that it is the way that it is. So one, I hear you talking about the anger, but what I'm hearing is more of like a sense of allowing that healthy, understandable anger versus the anger and rage that you should be able to control this situation in a different way. I don't know if I heard that right, but yes, that's what I'm hearing. Or, or that I should respond a different way. One of the things that's been really challenging for me is that, you know, this isn't New York. This is the Dominican Republic. This is a developing country. The medical system is way different. And there's so, you know, I'm like part lab assistant. I'm part nurse. I'm part, you know, like I have to stay there overnight with him while he's been, while he's in the hospital. That at this point is like going on a month of being inside of a hospital. And the way things happen is like, they, you know, it's like, you should know that. Well, you should know that. Well, I'm like, who, 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 who told me? You know, like just for example, you know, so when my father got the diagnosis, they told me instead of telling him, they were like, okay, we're going to tell you so you can tell him. And I'm like, oh my, so I, I got to do that too. Oh, okay. <laughs> How do I explain this? And then, you know, part language barrier too. I'm fluent in Spanish, but I wasn't educated in Spanish. So there's some words, medical terms. I'm like, what is this? So in just in dealing with, with all of that, that's been like the additional thing that I've had to like really like accept and, you know, really use the tools and what I know to channel that in, in another way that is, doesn't turn into coping. Right, exactly. And you really are and you're doing it. And again, which is why I so appreciate you being willing to talk about this, because I'm, I know you're not the only one. And without the tools and without knowledge of who you are as a highly sensitive it's very easy to understand that this could be something that would shut anybody down, but definitely a highly sensitive down. But meanwhile, I'm listening to you. I'm also watching what you're sharing on our highly sensitive leadership training forum. And you're asking for support. You're allowing support to be given to you, not just by other members in the business miracles community, but I feel like I recently just saw you share that like there's somebody who's coming into the home and she's helping 
with meals. Did I, did I, am I remembering? Yeah. So right? she's taking great care of him. She, she's a great cook. So I just been like reaching out for support, you know, not in a desperate way, just more like I'm going to have exactly. this work, you know, exactly. this is, this is going to work. You know, That's my right. life has to work because if my business doesn't work, he, you know, we're all going to go down. That's know? right. That's right. Yeah. And again, and I see you doing this. And as you said, without going into those highly sensitive coping mechanisms, like I teach about, right, where you're either like pushing to the point where you're, you know, absolutely like creating like health challenges for yourself or any other kind of shut down physically, emotionally. And you're also not going into hiding. You talked about you just received an, an order that came in. So it's definitely far from perfect, but again, that's life and that's life, especially during these exceptional times. But what I do hear is that there is a sense of grace. There is a sense of, you know, regality and a sense of enough awareness to be able to keep the various pieces moving and to use the tools to help you stay in each moment step by step. So I'd love for you to talk just a little bit more about the tools you've mentioned a couple of times. So maybe if there's something specific from the program that has been most supportive for you right now, or, you know, anything else along those lines. Yes. So I would say, so the, the tool I use most often is the order from the universe, as well as the belief transformation tool. And the tool that I, that's really probably the most transformative and the one that I most resist are the, the shit tools. Yes. S H T T tools. Right. So um, shame transformation yeah. tools for anyone yes. hearing yeah. it for the first time. We lovingly call it in the community, the shit process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, it's, it's great to just give witness to, you know, to the different aspects of things that I, you know, I am ashamed about. So one thing that I, I did the tool around, I used the tool around was like, you know, this situation with my dad. I started, I felt my, I knew I was going into rage because he said something like, I don't feel what, and I said, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And I was like, oh my God, I just told my father who's in the hospital bed to shut up. Like, that's not cool. Um, so I probably should do something about that. And what I got after it was that I could, you know, that this was really an honor. It's really an honor to be able to take care of him. And two, that I could do so with joy because this is something I'm choosing to do. You know, a lot of people just leave their parents to die in a home or whatever, you know, no judgment, but that's what some people do. And I'm choosing, you know, not to do that. It's my choice. So I was able to, you know, kind of take reins of the energy there. And really, so within a few hours, that's when I got the diagnosis from the doctors that came in the room and I was in, I was in a co-working session with another member from the community. Cause I was like, I'm going to figure out how to get some work done sitting from this chair in this hospital. And they come in, give them the diagnosis. And I was just like, breathed it in. And I told my, my friend, my partner, and I was okay. You know, I was, I was just, I was okay. And then I worked for another hour and, you know, then I think at that point, that's when I told my dad, but yeah, like it, it just allowed me to like, not compartmentalize, but just take this in as life and just keep going, you know, but yeah. with, with grace. Yeah. That's really, really beautiful, Lydia. What I'm like really, really appreciating is, you know, again, how you're so beautifully describing the process, right? So being able to use the teachings and the tools doesn't mean that you're not going to have that moment where you tell your father who's in a hospital bed to shut up, right? Or whatever that moment looks like for each of us. Mm -hmm. But what it is about is that you caught it quickly and then turned to the tools that are there to support you and being able to shift and change the energy shift and change and get clear about your own feelings and then therefore shift and change the way you're able to be in relationship with your dad, as well as to continue, you know, connecting with another member of the community, being in a co-working space and keeping things moving. Again, this is like just 
such an incredible and, and like truly like awe inspiring description of the messiness that is part of life. And especially that's part of life in so many ways right now, again, during these exceptional times and ways that it can be handled as a highly sensitive that it doesn't need to shut you down. It doesn't need to crush you. It doesn't need to end you. It doesn't need to feel like you're being annihilated by the overwhelm of this exceptional situation in the midst of these exceptional times. But it, again, it can be handled. And that's everything that I, I set as an intention in the training program. There's another piece that I really want to highlight here before we wrap this conversation today, although I feel like I could, you know, just keep talking to you about everything that's, that's going on. But what I really want to highlight that, that we haven't said yet is the way that you really showed up in such a committed way to the program before January, 2021. Um, all of the weekly trainings on the training retreats, utilizing the pre-recorded trainings, showing up on the forum. I would get on a training call and, you know, I'm scanning the, the virtual classroom, if you will. And you always have your video on. You, I can tell and I can feel your intent focus. And then I see the effect in the ways that, again, you're, you're sharing on the forum of what you're receiving from the trainings, what's shifting, what's changing, even your decision to dive into the money mindset training that's available and really put that to work for yourself and make some incredible shifts and changes in that area in, in your life and your relationship with money, all to say that this is how it happens so many times, right? Is we're preparing for what we don't even know we're meant to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. And so like you did the work and it's not like in this moment when you've really been called upon to step up in such a way, you know, in relationship with your dad and then in relationship with yourself and your business within this relationship with your dad and the move. It's not like you had to scramble, but you, you are the one that put the work in place again, showed up, showed up in such a committed way that then there was a stronger muscle for you to call on in this heightened moment of you know, of need and of being called to rise up. And that's what just stands out to me so much, you know, about this time for you. But, you know, again, as a demonstration and a model about this time for so many of us might not look exactly like what you are currently facing right now, but we all have something along these lines that we're being asked to step up and into. So, you know, again, I really acknowledge you for that. And that's what highly sensitive leadership is about. That's mm. it. You know, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, because it really is about, you know, my whole life. Like, I, I really appreciate that acknowledgement of like that I have shown up because there's many there's many things that I have paid for that I did not show up in. And it, it, it was like, it, it was frustrating for, for everybody. And no one could figure out like, why is it that you won't do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just felt massively broken. I was just like, I'm just like, I don't get it. There's must be something wrong, you know, with me. And like, to your point about hiding, you mentioned earlier, like ordinarily, if I was going through a difficult time, I would have not even checked. I would have just not checked my business email and I would be in so much shame about that. I'm like, oh my God, I have like three weeks of emails. I haven't responded to customers. This is so wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I'll be beating myself up for that. But I, I, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that anymore. But yeah, it is really, I think it's because I really brought the program to my whole life and I was committed to, to not do, I just, you know, made a choice just to not do what I normally, what I would have done. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, again, really, really clear. And uh, you're far from the only one. Like that's a, that's a really common, highly sensitive story, right? And because a lot of previous programs or trainings, when they're not designed for us as highly sensitive, it's just not a match. So it makes it even that much harder to show up. But I'm so glad that, you know, the work that we do in the Business Miracles community, the training program is a match for you. It's been supportive for you. I feel it in my heart that the work that you've done is, is again, it's equipping you for, for this time and um, that we're all, we're all in it with you because you've allowed us to be in it with you and, and your life has not fallen apart and it won't fall apart and Mm -hmm. neither neither will your business Mm -hmm. Uh, because this is just part of the path that we travel. And I see you with the strength to continue to travel it. However, it's been a twist and turn from here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Lydia, what would you say to someone who's listening, who maybe can, you know, really relate to what you're sharing in this, you know, kind of window into highly sensitive leadership and they don't feel like they're at that place yet where they can commit or trust that they could handle, can handle these kinds of, you know, major life and business situations as a highly sensitive, what would you say to them? Mm, I would say to trust your intuition and to, you know, whatever you're seeking is, is really within you. I think all the things that I've discovered about myself since being in this program was already there. It's just, I didn't know what to do with it. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Where can people find out about you and the incredible work you're doing in the world? Yes. So you can go to my website at LydiaBenia.com. And you can also follow me on Instagram at also LydiaBenia.com. Awesome. We'll make sure that that information is in the show notes too. Lydia, thank you. Thank you for the way that you've shown up in the program. Thank you for what you had to do to honor our connection time today. And thank you for, you know, thank you for being on the journey with me. Thank you. And thank you so much for, well, I can thank you or universe God, but thank you so much for your gifts that you've brought forward. Uh, I appreciate that so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for listening. And until next time. Thank you for being a part of this Business Miracles podcast episode and for beginning to dip your toe into the journey of highly sensitive leadership training. If you are ready to truly use your sensitivities as strengths in all parts of your work and life, I invite you to connect for a one-on-one chat. You will experience being deeply listened to and together we'll get a sense of whether the highly sensitive leadership training programs are the best next step for you and your highly sensitive journey at this time. Just go to www.claritycall.com to schedule a conversation. We so look forward to connecting with you. Talk to you soon.